Alright, Dex Tech is saying I'm live. Man. Why are they gonna put my run at the end of the marathon? So many good runs. Such a hard act to follow. This is Space Hunter. This is a little hidden gem that uh, released only on the Famicom by Kimco six weeks after Metroid. Now, I'm not saying that Kimco slapped together a game in six weeks to try to bite some of Metroid's profits, but um, they probably slapped a game together in six weeks to try to bite Metroid's profits. Uh, so, someone was already saying they've never heard of this, and that was kind of the point. I kind of like to show off little games that no one's heard of. Uh, I'm ready to start, so I'll give a countdown. Three, two, one, go. It helps if I uh, actually hit the button. <laughs> so, the basic gist of this game is to uh, travel to seven planets and gather stuff, kill bosses, blow planets up, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, one of the interesting things about the game is that uh, it's completely random. Like, you know, I laid a bomb and revealed a cone of ice cream there. That's cool. There's another one. Why am I doing this? Well, it should be obvious. No. No, it shouldn't. Revealing these gives me power, which I'm going to use to fuel my sub-weapons. Why they're ice cream? Who knows? It, you know, it was 1986, a dev was probably on acid, I don't know. Metroid was a girl. The protagonist of this game is a girl, too. So, since uh, I'm gonna need a whole lot of power later, I'm actually gonna grind here for a minute. This face here gives me uh, 30 power per bomb. I don't know why. So we're gonna stop at 210 and carry on to the boss. The first boss is uh, pretty pathetically easy. He's weak to bombs, the weapon we have. Bomb him four times, and uh, he goes down before he can even do anything. Now we have uh, just over a minute to get out of here, and on the way I'm going to bomb that face again for uh, 30 more power. We'll be using a lot of that power once I uh, pick up some sub-weapons. I'm bombing Ronald Reagan. Alright. <laughs> Most things are weak to bombs, that's true, but not everything. So that's the first planet done. Uh, an interesting note about the planets is uh, you have to enter them from a specific location. If I go into a planet uh, from a different direction than I do, I'll appear in a completely different location. Which uh, I thought was kind of a neat touch for 1986. We're gonna go in here and pick up a sub weapon. I'm also gonna use a sub weapon. Because this guy's kind of a troll like that. <laughs> These are the swim fins. These will be important later. So, uh, you know, about a level and a half in, you can probably see why I uh, accuse Chemco of just throwing this together in six weeks. The animations are a little janky, there's one, two songs in the game, the bosses are kind of repetitive, the game's kind of easy. He actually gave me a really good pattern, he can be a little trolly. So, this uh, planet only gives us a minute to get out, but that's okay. So, uh, earlier on today, uh, Ness Cardinality was playing a bunch of newer Kimco games from about 1988 to 89, and he noted that uh, Kimco makes uh, really good music. And I wager by the time I'm done with this run, a lot of you will have a different opinion about that, because this is the only song you get, aside from the uh, battle theme. Uh, and here is a sub-weapon we have to have. Why they hid a critical sub-weapon behind a secret door? Who knows? 
It was 1986, a dev was probably on acid. There's another important item in here. So, the two items I picked up were a lightsaber and a heart. They do the exact same thing, they fire a straight projectile just like my white crystal here does. Um, what they do different is they do a different amount of damage, and they are the specialist weapon that take out different bosses. And I would like to pick up some health here. Okay. Uh, we're actually heading into a boss that caused me to reset a lot when I was grinding for PB here. This guy is only weak to bombs and is completely random. And by completely random, I mean he will move up and down in like that in big bursts, teleporting, whenever he wants and as far as he wants. Um, he's actually being super cooperative to me right now. I say that and he starts going trolly on me. Okay. Uh, that was actually a pretty kind pattern from him. I've gotten some really bad ones where he bounces up and down constantly and won't, you know, hold still for you. Uh, you may notice that the bombs I lay, uh, I drop them with the A button and then I have to run out of their blast range before they'll actually go off. Which means it's almost impossible to actually aim them anywhere on a uh, moving target. That guy is the definition of moving target. But he's down. I'm going to smack into the uh, Rystar cameo here for the hell of it. And we're going to head into probably my favorite planet and home of the best animation you've ever seen. Ready for it? Yeah. Six weeks of pixel art. Someone got paid to make that. I just want to make that clear to everyone. So we're going to go down here. Bomb another secret door. That was the super bomb, which um, explodes on four directions instead of two. I wouldn't even bother picking it up, but it's mandatory to kill a boss. Just like the heart is mandatory to kill this one. You'll also notice a whole lot of lag. Uh, anytime there's more than one enemy on the screen, lag starts. So, part of lag management is to try to kill as much of the uh, enemies as possible. It's not always practical, though. Because your character moves so fast that sometimes it doesn't even matter. You don't want to go hunting down enemies when uh, you could just be progressing. Run into the uh, Rice Star cameo again. There's nothing spe uh, special about this planet. There's literally nothing in it, even in a casual run, so... You just head to the end and fight the boss. Which means I have absolutely nothing to say at the moment. Just imagine I'm saying something witty here. This boss is weak to super bombs, and because... This one never moves up and down, I can just do this. I'm actually going to be a little safe here because uh, the last thing I want to do is die on the easiest boss in the game in a marathon. Whoops. Didn't quite mean to dip down there. So after this there's one more planet that's visible and then we're going to have a seventh one. Spoilers. The sixth planet I call the Bacon Planet because it looks like a giant slab of uncooked bacon. Or maybe that's just the carnivore in me talking. I don't know. But this is the Bacon Planet. Home of the boss that is probably going to ruin the run. The boss here has a chance of giving me a pattern 
where he does this weird dance where he vibrates back and forth and his hitbox actually doesn't match up with the uh, where he actually visibly is on the screen which is wonderful for trying to hit him hey don't do that <laughs> so my life is actually lower than I like it to be. I'd like to go in with full health. So I'm gonna pop an enemy on the way by and hope he drops a, um, a health refill. Yeah, the star is a health refill, the moons are power. So here we go, this is the part I'm most nervous about. This guy is a jerk, as you can see. So part of the problem is his hitbox is not where his sprite actually is. Uh, that actually went pretty well. Now on the way out of here, um, I have 133 power. That's perfect for what I need to do in the next level. Uh, because I am exactly 122 power short of 255. Uh, I'll show you why that's significant in a moment. The long story short of it is I need 250 power to use the sub weapon that will kill the last boss. And I'm gonna have to grind power, and if I'm right there in an interval where I can easily get to 250, uh, all the better. So this is actually perfect. And if that doesn't make sense, uh, just bear with me for a minute and I'll show you. We're gonna drop in here the final planet that shows up. Uh, after you blow up all six. How they cloaked the planet, I don't know. It was 1986, the devs were probably on acid or something. We're gonna head down to the very bowels of the planet, the very core, except we're not in some weird uh, submarine that delves through rock and lava like in that horrible movie. We're gonna take a small detour and we're gonna reveal our good friend Ronald Reagan again. If this guy bodies me, I'm gonna be mad. There, got him. So we're gonna bomb him a couple of times for uh, 30 power apiece. Wow. Good job, me. Switch to the final weapon, which is literally called Final Weapon. Head over here. Now, the thing about this boss is you have two phases. You go in with the final weapon first of all, and you kill him. Did you even see a final boss? I've never seen him. Never seen his sprite. <laughs> because, you know, I want to go fast, and if I can kill him before he even shows up, I'm gonna do it. So we're gonna head out of here. Time is actually coming up really soon. Uh, time is when I exit the planet. So that's going to be in about three, two, one, time. That's Space Hunter in, what, 12 minutes and 30 seconds? It's a fun little run. It's really easy with a couple of trolley spots. Um, you know, pick it up, give it a shot. I think anyone can run this one. I just wanted to show it off to you all as a, a hidden gem no one's heard of. Um, one thing I didn't note though, the reason I wanted exactly 130 power uh, if I had been grinding and I went over 255, I would have overflowed my power and dropped back to zero. That's how well coded this game is. I'm not saying they coded it in six weeks, but they probably coded it in six weeks. Anyway, 12 minutes, 33 seconds. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, that's all I got. I will kick it back over to the host. Have a good rest of the marathon, everyone. Alright, thanks Trey.